Hello, everyone. Happy Friday. How is everyone doing? I hope you're all doing all right. And I just wanted to point out this comment from New Florida Prepper 1, and it goes to what I've told you all or what I've said a whole bunch of times, me saying I've told you all like I'm preaching, right? Uh, and it's that uh, the line of defense between we the people and the federal government is our governors, is our own state governors. So just like in Texas, you're looking at, I believe his name is Governor Abbott uh, from Texas, where the federal government doesn't want to do its duty or fulfill its duty as far as protecting the invisible line. Well, not invisible line. Ladies and gentlemen, I have to be very careful what I say, because as I predicted on the video that I put out yesterday, I think it was, uh, when I said during that video, okay, I just said this word, I'm demonetized now. No doubt, demonetized. Uh, they went back to a, to a video that was like four or five years old and deleted it and told me that, hey, if you're not good, we're going to give you a strike. And this is how it starts. But as I stated before, ladies and gentlemen, we need to make sure that we support our state's governors when they're doing the right thing and, and tell them how we feel when they're doing the wrong thing. And just like here, New Florida Prepper 1 says, we do have the best governor with the new squatting laws. And I do believe that what uh, NFL, uh, New Florida Prepper 1 says, is that uh, he's referring to how we have all of these people squatting in houses. Like, for example, let's say a family goes on vacation, they come back, there's people squatting in their homes, and it makes it very difficult for the proper owners of those residents to even be able to move back into their home after coming home from vacation because the laws are not for the law abiding citizen anymore. It seems in some States. And therefore, since the federal government doesn't want to take care of the situation, then it's really up to the governors of each state. So if you live in a state that has a strong governor, then I think you'll be a lot better off than those other States you can just pick pick one, right? Illinois, um, California, New York. I think New Jersey is also one of those that's maybe going downhill a little bit. But you can pick one. I think you know what I mean. Uh, it's funny <clears throat> because uh, here I'm thinking in my head, all right, AP, you made your point. All right, stop now. <laughs> I was trying to explain something to my daughter here uh, just before coming into the bunker. I was talking to her about why it's why it is that a college degree nowadays is just not as valuable as what it used to be 20, 30, 40 years ago. And I told her the reason is is because the government, the federal government got involved in student loans and it made it very very easy for a person to get a degree in pretty much anything. And now there's so many degrees out there floating around that there's a lot of every profession that they can choose from to hire. So they can be very picky as to they hire. So now let's say, for example, where 30 or 40 years ago, maybe we were putting out, and I'm just making up these numbers. Let's say 30, 40 years ago, we were putting out a thousand engineers a year, right? They were very valuable. It was a very needed profession. But now, uh, since you can go to college pretty much on zero, right, on zero effort, uh, you know, you can pretty much apply to any college and get accepted. And um, uh, also, you don't have to worry about working summers because you can just borrow the money. Now, let's say we're pumping out five or 10,000 engineers every year, right? Do you think that an engineering degree now is worth more or worth less than an engineering degree was worth 40, 50 years ago before the federal government made it so easy for people to get indebted, for children to get indebted? right? With student loans. And while, while I'm telling her this, she was like, dad, I already knew what you were talking about, about two minutes into, into you talking to me, but it took you another 20 minutes just to explain that to me. <laughs> oh, so I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> Let's see. F. Pierre, how you doing? Good to see you. Evita, how you doing? Jr. good to see you, my brother. Yarn Prepper's in the house. Jan, Copernicus, how you doing? Lisa Foster. Uh, Italian Eddie is in the house. Ladies and gentlemen, today we will be choosing randomly, obviously, uh, someone from the video where I reviewed the Q3 reverse osmosis water filtration system uh, because someone is going to win that from that video. 
right? As long as they follow the rules, unfortunately, it's only open to people that live within the continental United States, right? So I've already got it all set up. All you have to do is remind me later on to choose someone. Uh, and the, it's all set up. What I got to do is click one button and we'll be able to uh, give that away, which is an awesome RO system, by the way. Uh, let me tell you what I really think about that system. I told you on the video, uh, that's a system that I would say is great for regular everyday use. It's very easy to install, number one. Very easy to change the filters. It doesn't take up a lot of room under the cabinet because it doesn't require a tank, although you can add a tank if you like to, right? Uh, however, I would not recommend it for off-grid or grid down situations because it does have a water pump within itself that uses about 114 watts of power. So I wouldn't want to spend 114 watts of power uh, during a grid down situation, especially if it was long term. But as far as ease of use during regular times, 100 watts really is nothing during regular times. Uh, it's a great system to have. And as I've always stated, you should never leave up to anyone else how clean your water is. You should be able to know how clean your own water is without someone telling you, hey, you can drink this. Don't worry about testing it. You should be able to know yourself. Uh, so, so yeah, go check that video out if you haven't. And uh, we'll be doing the giveaway here later on. And they still do have an awesome sale over there. So go check it out. And uh, let me just finish taking care of this now. Go check out Opus because they have a liquidation sale of their 2400, their 1800, and their 1200. Goodness gracious, you can get an Opus 1200 for like 350 bucks, I think, something like that. Uh, because what they're doing is, is they're selling their inventory, and that's it. They're not making any more. So they're just trying to get rid of it. And I did inquire on people that, let's say, for example, you purchased an Opus, anything, right, in the last two or three weeks. Because remember, they had a sale like early this month, and then they have this liquidation going on now. So let's say you purchase an Opus 2400 for 859 bucks. I think was the price that I got them to bring it down to on that three-day flash sale that we did. And now they're selling it for 799 bucks or 759 bucks. Opus does have a program where if within 30 days, just like Costco, like within 30 days, if you bought something and then it goes on sale for a lesser price, they will reimburse you the difference. So if you did, go take advantage of that, ladies and gentlemen, because I was a little bit upset when they came up with this liquidation sale uh, because I was like, hey, you just had a sale not too long ago on the 2400 and the 1800 and now you're having another one for even less. And they explained to me that you can get a refund or, yeah, a refund on the extra amount that you paid in comparison to the last sale and the one that, that's happening right now. So go check that out if you fall into that category. Let's see, Randy Brown, how you doing? Tammy Harder, how are you doing? Uh, let's see who else. Adam Hoffman. I'm getting a five by five. That's awesome. Scrap metal racing. How are you doing? Good to see you. Ghost Lynn Khan. How are you doing? Good evening to you as well. Let's see. Uh, Squirrel. How are you? Nasir is in the house. How are you doing, Nasir? Linda Bob. How are you doing? Happy Easter weekend, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Or happy Good Friday. Is JT in the house? Let me say hello to JT in case I miss you. I, I don't think I've seen you yet. Uh, Fran Moyer, how are you? William Martin, good to see you. Uh, let's see, uh, who else is here? Uh, Gracious48 is in the house, how are you? There's JT. Okay, uh, Cooper sent AZ, how you doing? All the way from Arizona. Old Marine is in the house, how you doing, Old Marine? Good to see you. Uh, Pat Small, how are you? SR is in the house, how you doing, SR? Good to see you. Amazing Grandma. Uh, Corina Evans, how you doing? You haven't missed very much, except that we are going to be doing a giveaway today for those that entered the giveaway on the reverse osmosis video that I did a few days back. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, I was saying, uh, I think, who was it that said that? Scrap Metal Racing, we don't call the cops, we're Italian. <laughs> And that's how a lot of rural areas take care of squatters, by the way, if that's what you're talking about there, squat, scrap metal racing. 
Uh, Rick Stahl, how are you doing? All the way from Russell Township, Ohio. Good to see you. Uh, Battleborn, all the way from the Silver State of Nevada. Uh, Pat Small, Marsha, how are you? Jay Paul, Butterfly is here. Let's see. Ladies and gentlemen, anything that you want to talk about, most of these live streams, for those of you that may be joining in for the first time, uh, most live streams, I usually just leave it as an open forum. Uh, first, it's more fun, I think, that way to just go back and forth about any random subject matter that you may want to talk about or any comment that you may want to share with the community. Every once in a while, I'll have uh, something that I want to talk about in specific, but uh, I try for the most part to keep it pretty fluid so that it can be about the questions and subject matters that you all want to talk about. All right. So go ahead and put anything on the comments there in all caps. That way I can hopefully catch it. Okay. Uh, anything that you want to talk about or any questions that you may have. Let's see. I see that I have some, well, look at this. I, I didn't even notice that I had gotten all of these super shots. <laughs> uh, Lady T. Thank you very much, Lady T. Thank you so much for that. Uh, let me see. Um, Law of the minimum, man. <laughs> These names that are all in there, I got to figure it out. Law of the minimum. Let's say uh, in 1970s, uh, my parents lost a house to squatters. They celebrated when Pinoche uh, came and ended socialism. It was a trick to take our freedoms. Isn't that something? Yep. And that was in Chile. Yep. Socialism works so great, ladies and gentlemen, that it's failed everywhere that they've tried it. But it's because they just haven't done it right, if you haven't heard. Uh, thank you very much, Law of the Minimum, by the way. Aussie Life, how are you? Good to see you. Oh, I will. And then you put the puppy is getting big, too. I don't know if you saw her on, I think it was yesterday's video. But, uh, yeah, she's getting pretty big. And she's also a good little girl. I'm teaching her how to how to catch a Frisbee right now. And she's actually doing really good. I started out by teaching her how to catch food in her mouth, right? So I started out with popcorn. So I would throw a popcorn at her. And if she didn't catch it with her mouth, I'd grab it from the floor before she can get to it. And then eventually she figured out that, hey, if I don't catch this in the air, I'm not going to get to eat it. So now she's pretty good at catching food in her mouth. So I'll give her a treat and throw it to her in her mouth and she'll catch it. And now when I bring karma outside to play frisbee, because Karma's really good at playing Frisbee. Uh, she'll catch that thing. I mean, she'll go fast and get it really good. Um, when I bring her outside to play Frisbee, uh, Lulu will come along, and I'll start throwing the Frisbee at her, you know, at about three or four feet away. And uh, she's been catching it about half of the time that I throw the Frisbee at her. Not hard, just enough that she can uh, have enough reaction time to open her mouth and, and grasp on it. So she's doing really good, by the way. So that's good. Uh, let me see. Jimbo R. Thank you very much, Jimbo. And uh, Penny Willis, thank you as well. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I truly do appreciate you. Uh, if you want to support what I do on my regular videos, just let them play through. That really helps because YouTube does not like me for some reason lately. <laughs> uh, Michael Eversberg, how you doing? Good to see you. Uh, let's see. Okay, let's bring it on down some, because if not, I'm going to get way far behind. Let's see. Uh, Big Dog, how are you doing? Good to see you, Big Dog. Tammy Brennan, how are you? The Prepping Mantis is in the house. Let's see. Oh, wait a minute. J JR has his own chat now. Where, where are you at, JR? What's your... Uh... Uh, let me know what your what your thumbnail is or your name, your on-screen name. Does it say JR? Uh, let's see. Michelle Chacon, I think. Is this sale for... Uh, they have everything on sale, uh, Michelle. Uh, Opus has pretty much everything on sale right now, but the the legacy models the 2400 the 1800 and the 1200 are like on liquidation sale but they have the mega 5 the mega 3 the mega 2 they have them all on sale 
but those other ones are on liquidation where when they sell them out, that's it. They're done. And if you do go over there, make sure that you use my code for an additional 5% off. Because even though those uh, three or four Opus products, the liquidation ones are on sale uh, for being liquidated, you can still use my 5% off. So that's like an extra 30, 40, 50 bucks off the price, which is great. Okay, Pantry Mama's in the house. How you doing? Stormy Kurtz, how you doing? All the way from Eastern Washington. Let me bring this over here. Let's see. Let's see if I can bring that there. That way I don't have to be looking away from you guys that much. I think that might be a little better. The Redneck Prepper is in the house. How you doing? I still want to know what JR's thumbnail and on-screen name is. Uh, Susan Santoro, how are you doing? JR Rosado. JR Rosado is new in the chat. Welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in J.R. Rosado, and I do believe that that is my friend, J.R. I just asked, I just asked, uh, what's your thumbnail look like? And there you are, J.R. Good to see you, brother. Thanks for joining in. Okay, let's see. Let's bring it on down. Okay. Have you all seen what Gold's been doing the last few days or a couple of weeks? <laughs> I think people are going to be amazed here in the next couple of years. I think gold is, man, you know what? I'm not going to put, yes, I will. What the heck? It's just for fun. I'm not a financial advisor. I don't do what I do or say uh, as far as comes to investment. Uh, I think that by this time next year, gold will be well on its way to about $3,500 an ounce. That's what I think. Uh, but we'll see. Uh Let's see. Uh, uh, John, how you doing, brother? McBean Scottish Fitness in the house. I caught another creator passing false information that he saw on IG, on Instagram, and did not spend 30 seconds to verify the info. Well, yeah. And you know what? Uh, that's happened to me a couple of times, but I, I, I want to say that whenever that happens to me, I try to rectify it as soon as possible. Uh, the last time that happened to me, actually, is uh, when I said that Tyson, which I wish that I wouldn't have made that mistake because it was just a small mistake that uh, made me feel like I couldn't leave that video up because I just don't want to leave it up, even though I rectified it by saying the day after that, hey, I said that Tyson was owned by China and they're not. They're not owned by China. I wholeheartedly disagree with what they're doing as far as with their hiring and firing. And I have to be careful the words that I use so that I don't get kicked off of here, uh, just like my and suffer like my other videos have. Uh, but I wholeheartedly do not like what they're doing when it comes to hiring and firing of people. Uh, but just because I said that they were owned by China, I felt that I couldn't leave that up. So I ended up taking that down. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it happens to everyone. I guess it depends on on how you take care of it once you find out that you're wrong about something, you know. So it is what it is. But hey, good to see you, by the way, John. Let's see. Uh, let me see. The unknown knowns be why void bod. <laughs> oh, man, that's a good one. Saffron boy, how you doing? The grandbaby is good. Just saw him a couple of days ago. Let's see. Uh, Jackson Family Farm and Fun, good to see you here. Welcome, and thank you very much. Linda Young, how you doing? Happy Easter to you and to everyone. <laughs> Dale, that's funny. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, SR has a, has a question. Uh, will your code still work with Ops Sale? 800 bucks for the 2400 or five. Oh man, that is such a great deal for the 1800. You know what? That 1800 is actually a better deal per watt hour than the 2400 by like one and a half cents or something. But yeah, it will work for them as well. And I just checked that to make sure that it was true. So I think that the 2400 comes out to like 759 or something like that after the discount. But I mean, you can't beat that. That's an awesome price.
Yes, indeed. Don't forget the reason for the season. It's definitely not a bunny that lays chocolate eggs, right? Uh, it's always a quiet one. It's always the quiet ones. Welcome. Good to see you all the way from Denver. Rich Mountains is in the house. How are you doing? Good to see you. How you doing, Tony? No, no. Ops is not going out of business. They are liquidating... Uh, they're legacy models. Uh, you know, the ones that are like not fast charging, they're liquidating those uh, and uh, they're not making any more because they're innovating. They're making models like the mega series that are better, faster, and all that kind of stuff when it comes to the solar generator industry. So it's a good thing that they're doing that. Although I really like the legacy models. The only thing about the legacy models, and I mean like the older models like these guys, that's the Mighty Mouse right there. The only thing about them, really, that's not great is that uh, they don't charge very fast off of an AC outlet, right? They don't charge that fast like the new models do. But if if you don't want something that charges in an hour and a half, then one of these guys is just fine. And I personally believe that the slower that you charge a solar generator, the better that it is for the longevity of its battery, right? So, I mean, it, it's a good thing that they're doing this, but I think that their legacy models are really good, really good units. Let's see. All right, let's see, let's see. I'm looking, ladies and gentlemen, I'm looking. Bear with me. Oh, nice, Paul. Paul says, I just bought another 17 ounces of silver. Hey, Paul, over there in the UK, I believe that's where you're from, uh, do you have to pay a VAT tax on silver? Let us know. Put it all in caps. Uh, silver, 200 Yeah, silver should be at least $200 an ounce by now. Uh, just keeping up with inflation from its previous highs back in the 80s. Uh, and even back in 2011, it should be around 200. And uh, when you take a look at the fundamentals, as far as how much silver there is above ground, uh, compared to how much gold there is above ground, and also how much silver comes out of the ground uh, is mined at a ratio of every one ounce of gold, about seven and a half to eight ounces of silver comes out of the earth, right? But right now, silver to gold ratio is about 80 when it comes to the nominal price. But ladies and gentlemen, I celebrate that. Uh, I celebrate that silver is so manipulated uh, because it allows me to get it on the cheap. Right now, if you can get silver less than 30 bucks an ounce, man, that is giving it away, literally giving it away. Uh, so uh, as long as it's that cheap in nominal terms, I have no problem continuing to stack it up. Some months better than others. Some months I can only get a few ounces, but it is what it is. As long as you're consistent and you're always getting a little bit, that's all that really matters. Even if you only get one ounce every payday, or even if, if you can only afford two or three dimes, silver dimes, a payday, as long as you're consistent, your stack will continue to grow. Uh, Dale Cobb, how you doing? Good to see you, brother. Brer Patch, how are you doing? Good to see you today. Squirrel219 is in the house. Uh, Jeff Hansen is in the house. Happy Easter to you. Let's see. Let's see. Let's bring it on down. Oh, my goodness. That is a lot. That is such a high price. Paul says that he paid 524 pound. That's like close to 700 bucks, isn't it? In US dollars, 524 pounds for 17 ounces. Wow, that is crazy. Man, but you know what, Paul? I think that if you ever need it, you're going to be very happy that you got it. So you're looking at that by 17. 
I mean, it's not terrible. It comes out to like forty plus dollars an ounce American U.S. USD. Crazy. You know, I think this is such a good idea. You know, Yarn Prepper says everyone can prep. Everyone can prepare, no matter what your socioeconomic status is. Uh, just get five cans, five extra cans of goods every time you go shopping. It could be anything, as long as you eat it. As long as you consume it, get an extra five cans. And guess what? If you can't afford to get an extra five cans, get an extra one can. And it will add up. It will add up over time. How you doing, Terry, all the way from Oklahoma? Yes, Sue, just contact Opes. And if you have any problem with it, just send me an email and I'll forward it to my rep, all right? Uh, that's not the optimum thing because sometimes I get flooded with emails uh, and I may not see it for a while. But I will forward it to my rep. I had something like that happen here not too long ago. And it took me like, uh, you know, a few days uh, going back and forth to my rep because I didn't know that they had that program where they were able to do that. And uh, the person at customer service that talked to one of our community members, they must not have known either. But they do have a program that does that. And we were able to get a refund for the person or at least a refund of the difference. It was like 206 bucks or something like that, which, hey, 200 bucks, that's 200 bucks. You know, that's like 300 pounds of pasta that you can put away in your preps. So even if it was like 50 bucks, that's still worth taking a few minutes to try and get that back. So absolutely. Uh, the coffee guy, how you doing, coffee guy? Could you quickly run down what the 1800 will run. It's very simple. The reason that the Opus 1800 is called the 1800 is because it will put out, uh, it will put out a constant 1800 watts. So if you plug something in it that takes 1800 watts of energy to run, it will constantly put out that 1800 watts without tripping. Now, if you look at any garden variety AC outlet in your house, right? Just a regular AC outlet, not a 20 amp, just your garden variety 15 amp AC outlet in your house. That runs 1800 watts. So pretty much an Opus 1800 can run pretty much anything that a garden variety outlet in your house will run and a 15 amp outlet continuous, right? Now, it's not going to stay charged that long if you're running 1800 watts out of it continuously. Right, because it's 1,488 watt hours. Uh, but you can run a refrigerator. You can run two refrigerators off of it. Uh, you can uh, be bringing in power from a solar uh, array or from a solar panel outside at the same time that you're running a refrigerator, et cetera, off of it. Uh, but you can pretty much run anything off of it that goes up to 1,800 watts. So if you want to run a refrigerator, a freezer, no problem. The question is... The question will be is how long can you run it for, right? Some freezers, some refrigerators are more efficient than others. I, I don't remember offhand, but uh, when I tested it out and reviewed it, because usually whenever I review a solar generator of any capacity or high capacity, I usually run my refrigerator off of it to see how long it'll run. And But I would say that at least at a minimum, the 1800 will run your refrigerator slash freezer for at least 12 hours. Uh, unless it's a very old and inefficient, uh, you know, appliance, all right? So that's what that will run. So you can pretty much fill in the blanks as to what it will run. Anything that's below 1,800 watts, it will run with no problem. I hope that answered your question. Uh, let's see. Uh, Candy asked, if I had an 1,800, will it be able to use a... Yeah, absolutely. You can, and it does not have to be an Opus solar panel, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Now, listen, the Opus solar panels are very, very good solar panels. They're outstanding quality, but they are pricey. Okay. So you don't have to use an Opus solar panel to, to recharge your Opus solar generator. Uh, obviously, you can recharge it off of an AC outlet if you want to, if that's what you want to use it for. That's just like an emergency backup for the, when the power goes out for a half of a day or a day or so, 
right? Uh, but you can run it off of, or you can charge it with any garden variety solar panel, as long as you have a connector that will splice into an eight millimeter. And that's just a matter. And and if you and they usually come with that. Usually your 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 eighteen hundred or your solar panels will come with like an MC four connector, and then you may have to have to get a splice uh, eight millimeter that will go into the eighteen hundred. That's it. It's not that much, and they're like five five to ten bucks to get that little wire that has the eight millimeter. If you're going to put your solar panel uh, some distance away from your solar generator, all right. So yeah, you can use any solar panels. Now the open solar panels, do I recommend them? Yes, I do because in my opinion, they're very efficient. The open solar panels are really efficient, and the ones that I have, even though they're not rated for like leaving them outside in the rain and stuff, I left them outside all summer last year with the rain, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. They still work great. All right, so they're made to last. They're very efficient, but they are pricey, and you will pay. You will get what you pay for, though. But you can use any solar panel as long as you have a way to connect it to the generator, which is easy to do. Some people think that you have to use an Opus solar panel to hook up to an Opus solar generator, and you don't. You know, you don't. Uh, UK Urban Prepper, how you doing? Good to see you. Isn't that something, Paul Sargent? Assisted, assisted taking your own life has reached the UK. I could not believe how many people in Canada were assisted into doing that last year. I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we live in interesting times, and you know, I still stand by the fact that in the end, good will win over evil. It always has. Oh, let's see. North of the 52nd. How you doing? Do you have any tips on buying land and property in Alaska? Prices way higher than in the lower 48. Uh, I, I don't think that the prices are that high. It depends on where you buy the land, right? It depends on where you buy it. For example, if you buy land outside of the borough where I live, uh, it's not taxed. You don't pay any taxes on it at all. No residential taxes, but there's no services. And you do have, to, and and you do end up spending money on other things instead of paying tax. Like for example, let's say that I got property outside of the borough, which is way north of here. I would want to get a a satellite phone to make sure that I can, you know, reach someone in case of an emergency. I would like to get a Starlink in order so that I can have internet. Then AP, why are you moving to the bush? <laughs> Well, it's not crowded in the bush at all, right? There's no there's no people out there, and that's what I like about being out there, going up there, right? Uh, one of another thing that you want to get would be uh, that flight med, where you pay. It's like an insurance where every month you pay a certain amount, and if something happens where you need urgent care, a helicopter comes and gets you, uh, stuff like that. So you're gonna have expenses, even though you're living outside the borough and you're living, you know, outside of any utilities whatsoever, any services whatsoever. But the land up there is not very expensive at all. The only kind of land that's really, really expensive up there is like if it's right on a roadway. Those are usually pretty pricey, right? Or if there's a lot of uh, waterfront property on it, those are a little bit pricey as well. Right. But let's say land that's like in and around town. Yeah, it can get a little bit expensive. I know that there's some land that's maybe, I don't know, 15, 20 miles north of Fairbanks. Uh, you could probably pick it up for about, I'm guessing probably about three to $5,000 an acre, depending on what it is and where it is. Okay. One of the things that you really have to watch out for is first thing that I will look at if you're going to buy some land in an area where they tax, where they uh, have residence tax is what are your mills? You know, what are the mills that you're going to pay? What percentage is it? Uh, I think around here it goes for about 1.4, 1.5. So it's like 14, 15 mills that you pay, which is about uh, it, 15 mills is like 1.5% of the assessed value. That's what you're going to pay in taxes, right? Every year. So take a look and see how much taxes you're going to pay. If you plan on building on it, Take a look and see uh, if it has permafrost. And if it does have permafrost, uh, try and find 
uh, find and see if there are any areas within the land that you're buying where there is no permafrost and you can build easily, right? Because even if there is permafrost, it just depends how deep it is. Uh, you can always build on pillars that they drive down to the bedrock and then you can build on top of those. So those are a few of the things that you want to take a look at. How far away do you want to be from, from town, you know, and uh, things like that, you know. I mean, when I bought this land, I got very lucky, ladies and gentlemen, because I didn't even know what permafrost was. But I have really, really good soil here. Oh, that's pretty awesome. Sue says, my OPS is still at 100% since October when I received it and topped it off. Make sure you take them out and uh, use them every once in a while and then top them off just to make sure that they're working okay, right? Because... Uh, an op solar generator is a machine just like any other machine and uh some of them have failed in the past and some of them will fail in the future not trying to jinx you but um if you put it away full take it out every three to six months or so use it on something hook up your tv or whatever to it and i uh, use it for a little bit make sure it's working okay uh put in your usb in there make sure it's working then charge it up and make sure that it's charging okay just so that you know that if you ever need it, it's going to be there for you, right? Just like any other piece of equipment, you want to make sure that it's working okay for when you need it. Uh, Rex Wilhite is in the house. How you doing, Rex? Good to see you. So there is a VAT on silver. Isn't that something? There will be a VAT tax coming to the United States of America in our future, in our near future, meaning in the next few years, if we are still under the same uh, financial system that we are now. So if we still have the dollar, if nothing's really changed except that now we're paying more taxes, our debt is higher, et cetera, et cetera, but it's still the same system, we're going to have a VAT tax here because there's nowhere else that they can bleed money from the people except to increase taxes, all right? Inflation and direct taxes. That's the only way that they can get more money from the people, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so there's probably going to be a VAT tax. <laughs> oh, man, I got one. You can't eat silver and gold. That is actually you can eat silver and gold. Okay, you can eat it, but it doesn't have, have nutritional value, right? So, so you can eat it, but no nutritional value. And uh, you're 100 percent right, uh, man. Do I have one of these here? Let me show you one of these. Let me show you what else you cannot eat. Let's see. All right, you you can't eat this either, right? Okay, I mean you can eat this just like you can eat. Uh, a tenth ounce, see right here? Here's here's a tenth ounce of silver. I can eat this. It's not going to do anything for me, okay? And I can crunch this up, and I can eat it as well, but it's not going to do anything for me, right? So you can eat both of these things, but neither of them are going to do anything for you if you eat them. But with this, while people are still accepting these, I can still go and maybe go get an ounce of this, right? So I can put it away. Instead of putting this away, I'll put this one away. This is the one you gave me, JT, for Christmas. So instead of keeping this as excess wealth, because I don't need it for anything else, if you're lucky enough that you still have a couple of these left over at the end of the month after you pay all your bills, turn this into this. And even though you can't technically eat it because it won't provide you nutrition, then in a few years when this only buys you half of what it can buy you today, this you can take to a coin shop or a dealer and trade it in for more of these than what you paid for them today and still be able to buy the same stuff five, 10 years from now than what you could today with the same money that you spent on that. I hope you understand that because you're 100% right there farming in the city. You cannot eat gold or silver. But if you go and ask some Venezuelans that have put away gold and silver, after their, after their fiat currency hyperinflated, they were able to take that gold and silver and still feed their families, right, with very little effort. Any country in the world that you travel to will have a way for you to be able to change this or gold into whatever currency they are using in that country. Any country in the world, okay? So although you cannot eat gold and silver, you can use it to buy food, to eat. And that's what you put it away for so that it will preserve your purchasing power. Not to become rich, but so that it can preserve your purchasing power. What people have to understand in general 
is that the reason there's only one reason, ladies and gentlemen, please understand this. Please teach your children these. There's one reason why they created these. All right, we were on a full gold and silver standard before they created these guys. There's a reason why they did that. Why? Did it make anyone's life better? Yeah, it sure did. It allows the government to steal from you indirectly. It allows them to print these out of thin air, right? And not have to work them into existence. Well, if they're printing these out of thin air, then where is this getting its value? Well, it's getting its value from the ones that you earned into existence, right? The government doesn't produce anything. All they can do from you is take. And this is one of the best ways that they found to take from you without you saying that it's okay. I did not hear what is going on in Oregon and Pennsylvania. Someone fill me in. Ah, outstanding, Kathy. Kathy Acevedo says, my husband just bought me my first gas generator. Sorry about that. I've always said that if you're going to get a generator, make sure it's a gas generator first, right? I love solar generators, but if you don't have either, get a gas generator first because you can control how much fuel you put away for future use, but you cannot control whether that sun is going to come out when you need energy the most. So always have a gas generator first. A solar generator, in my opinion, is a great complement to gas generators and vice versa. Oh, Evita is going to Puerto Rico for a few days to celebrate Poppy's birthday. Awesome. Well, give Poppy, give Poppy a uh, happy birthday from us. Man, it would be so awesome, Evita, if you can chime in, excuse me, while you're in Puerto Rico during his birthday. What's the 17th of April? Where is this at? Just a second. Let me take a look at my calendar. Well, the 17th is on a Wednesday. Maybe you can chime in on that Friday's live stream and uh, we can sing him happy birthday. <laughs> um. <laughs> uh, farming in the city. Uh, it's obvious that you're probably new to the channel or newer to the channel uh, because everything you're saying, I agree 100%, 100% with. And uh, what you're what you're saying right here is right and it's wrong, all right? Barter items will be more valuable than silver and gold, all right? So during a crisis, all right? So let's say that there is a major systemic crisis and we're right in the middle of it, right? Where maybe food is not available. Maybe medicine is not available. Uh, maybe there's no way for you to be able to get water that's clean, right? Absolutely. That's what we prepare for. But we first prepare with those things that we need in order to sustain our standard of living. So do you eat? Prep foods. Do you drink water? Prep water. Prep water filtration. So you can always have a way to clean water when you run out of the water that you've prepped, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Do you use toilet paper? Prep toilet paper, et cetera. For barter items, I've always advocated that instead of getting something just to barter, even if you don't use it, just prep more of the stuff that you're going to use anyways. That way, you know it's going to get used eventually. And if you prep more of what you need, you can use some of that to barter with. But the question is this, do crises, small or large, last forever? No, there's a beginning to a crisis and an end to a crisis. Well, after the crisis is over, let's say it's a financial collapse, okay, which is, it's very likely that that will happen. It's happened before, so it can happen again, no matter where you live. Let's say there's a financial collapse where these guys here were devalued to almost nothing, right? Let's say they were devalued to zero. There's a new currency. This no longer holds any value. Well, throughout the history of mankind, any financial collapse that there's ever been, you've always been able to restart an economy with gold and silver. So 
the question about gold and silver is this, when should you get it and should you get it? And here's the answer that I have. I'm not a financial advisor. I say that you get gold and silver only after you've got all of your preps, all right? After you've got all of your preps and you've got income coming in that you have nowhere else to put because you have all the preps that you need because your finances are all settled, meaning that you're pretty much debt free. And even if you're not debt free, I would still recommend or advocate that you get a little bit of gold and silver every month or one or the other every month. You do it on a constant basis, just a little bit, not a lot. And why is that? Because that's what I call excess wealth. Excess wealth is when you've already gotten all of the excess wealth you can in the form of tangible items, food, medicine, you know, um, uh, water filtration systems, self-defense, you know, um, uh, ammunition, extra tires for your cars, extra parts for your cars, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Once you've got all of that stuff and you feel very comfortable, you go inside of your pantry and you're like, man, if things were to go down right now, I don't have to leave the house for the next six months. Once you're really comfortable with all of your preps and that it's going to take care of you and your family for a sustained period of time, and you have extra income coming in that you really can't use to, to fill in the gaps because you have everything you need, instead of leaving that money in the bank, I would rather turn it into gold and silver. Right now, if you don't have excess wealth, then you don't have that problem, right? But if you have excess wealth, would you rather leave your money in the bank so that inflation can ravage it, or would you rather put your money into your fiat currency into real money where it maintains its purchasing power and therefore you don't allow the government to steal your wealth by printing money out of thin air? All right, that's that that's about gold and silver. But then, then again, I mean, I've said this spiel at least a thousand times in the last seven or eight years. Uh, but I have no problem saying it every time that it comes up because I think it's important to reiterate it and for people to hear it. Let's see, bring it down. Let me see. Cranky old lady, how are you? Question, if you are charging a fast charging battery on a solar, on solar, doesn't make any difference. Okay. Uh, it seems like the array would be limiting factor, but all things electrical is my weak spot. Well, you know what? I, I think, I think I understand what you're asking, right? You're saying um, that uh, you think that the charging capacity of solar panels are are not as good as charging it from your wall outlet. And there are a lot of solar generators allow you to charge from your wall outlet, like from your AC, a lot faster than what you can charge from solar. I think it ought to be the other way around. I think it ought to be that you can charge faster from solar than from your wall. Because if you ever truly need to use your solar generator for long term, then you're going to want it to charge faster using solar panels because you're not going to have the availability of grid power to go ahead and recharge it up from your wall outlet, right? And um, I do believe that the Mega Series from Opus, they do that. I, I believe that the Mega 3 and the Mega 5, I would have to check on the Mega 2, but I believe that on those two units, you can actually charge them with solar as much as 2,100 watts per hour where charging them off of an AC outlet is about 1,800 watts per hour. So I believe that's how they work, and I would say that I would agree with you that it's more important. I think that's where you're getting at, that it's more important that you get a faster charge from solar than you do from an AC outlet. Uh, hey, thank you, UK. Thank you, UK Urban Prepper. And if you take a look at the description of my videos, uh, I think I saw someone asking, what's my code? I don't know what they asked what my code is for. But if you look at the description of my video, I have the codes for anything there that I affiliate with or sponsor with. And also on the description of my videos, there is a link that says, go check out my website. 
If you go check out my website, all of our partners are also there. And all you have to do is click on their picture and it'll take you to their site. And the code is right there as well. So just go check that out if, the, if you want to find out what the code is. I can't remember what they all are for each specific item. Uh, Darcy Rossner asks, what is a good price for silver per ounce? So for a tri ounce of silver right now, I would say that maybe $3 over $3 premium. So like $3 over melt, I would consider that a decent price. Okay. Uh, unless it's like a, a, um, a sovereign coin. So if it's a coin like the American silver Eagle or a Canuck, you know, Canadian maple leaf or a Britannia, uh, something like that, that's made, that's minted by a government. I would probably go as much as like 350 to 450 over spot. But I would rather stick to around three dollars, two fifty over spot for your bullion. You know, for your rounds, uh, I think that would be a good price. So I think that right now the spot price on silver is like twenty five bucks. So I would be comfortable paying up to twenty eight dollars an ounce for an ounce of generic silver, and I would be pretty comfortable paying up to like thirty dollars, maybe thirty one dollars an ounce for a silver eagle. Okay, so I actually just bought a silver eagle not too long ago for thirty one bucks. So for about $6 over spot, and uh, that was for someone's birthday. So, yeah, I would, uh, th to me, I think that's okay. Uh, but if you're just buying silver, like if you're not getting it for a, someone's birthday like I did, I got a silver ounce for someone's birthday. Uh, if you're not do getting it for that, then I would say uh, what I like to do is I just get the bullion. You know, I get the bullion every year. I get some of the uh, new eagles that come out because I just like them. And I think it's nice to have a, have some from every year that come out. Uh, but just for stacking, just get bullion. Get your generic silver because it's still triple nine silver. It's just got a different design on it. That's all. Let's see. Uh, a Hobbit, have I ever had any Cuban picadillo? I've had picadillo. They're pretty much all the same, depending. I mean, I guess you can put different things on it. But, yeah, I've had picadillo. I've made my own picadillo. It's, it's really, really good when it's fresh veggies. Let's bring it on down some. How you doing, VD Queen Solo? Good to see you. Where are we at? Goodness gracious, we're going to an hour, aren't we? Man, time's going by quick. Uh, let me see. Dasha Kai, go take a look at some of my older videos where I put where I show you how I put away dry goods. Uh, pretty much uh, my favorite way of putting away uh, dry goods is in bulk. So like five-gallon bucket, mylar bag, oxygen absorber. Uh, you get yourself an iron and a piece of wood, and you can seal that up, and you're going to be good for 25 years as long as you store it in a uh, temperature-controlled room away from rodents, all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, but go check some of my videos. I put away pretty much everything, beans, wheat berries, rice. Uh, let me see. Corn flakes I put away, which I think last forever. I mean, I put away so much stuff. And, uh, but pretty much the fundamentals of putting away something that's really dry is just to make sure that uh, you, you put it in a, I like to use mylar. You can dry can it and put it in jars. It's pretty much all the same thing. You're putting it in a, in a container that can be sealed, right? And inside that container, before you seal it, you're going to put in an oxygen absorber to make sure that whatever oxygen is in there will get sucked up or absorbed. And uh, no oxidation will take place. And then putting it away in a place that's temperature controlled, I would say below 70 degrees uh, to all the way down to like 40 degrees, I would say, is, is okay. Uh, and, of course, away from rodents or protected against rodents if you have some. You know, things like that that are really dry will last a very long time. JR, I don't know what you're doing, man. Hey, thank you, though, for getting your own account. I mean, I don't know. Evita's taking, Evita's like, hey, you stay here and you take care of everything, and I'm going to go chill out with Poppy. <laughs> Let's see here. 
Oh, this is a good question. Uh, YTUAP, uh, how and where do I get the best deal on an army sleep system? Those things are expensive. I can't even get a good deal on that here. And I live right next to a military base. But uh, go to an uh, go to one of those, uh, what do they call them? Army stores. You know, it's, it's like a little thrift shop, but as they sell army gear. Uh, they have one here. They have a couple here. And I went there to check out some of the gear that they had. And I couldn't believe the prices. I was like, these prices are ridiculous. How do you ever sell anything? And they pretty much told me the only thing that we really sell are the bunny boots, which are the big white boots that are for winter that are like good to like negative 70 degrees or something like that. But their prices were pretty ridiculous. I didn't buy anything. I was like, I'm not going to buy this here. I, I wanted to buy a cot. I wanted to buy a cot. And they were charging like 100 bucks for an army surplus cot. I was like, I can go buy a brand new cot that's just as good as this is not better for like 50, 60 bucks. And they're like, yeah, I know, but that's what my boss wants to sell them at. I'm like, okay. So, yeah. Uh, Margarita Castaneda, how are you doing? Uh, does Opes have plans to make a huge solar generator for her? They already have. They have the Mega 5, Margarita. The Mega 5 has 5,040 watt hours. And you can attach up to eight batteries to it. So you can attach up to eight batteries, which also come with 5,040 watt hours. And then you can attach the main unit to your breaker box via a 30 amp outlet. All right. But that part you'll have to figure out. You can hire an electrician to do it. I did my own, but I won't show how I did it because it may be different in different states as far as codes. Right. Mine works. I know it does. Right, but I won't show people how I do it because I don't want someone to misunderstand what I'm saying or something like that when it comes to wiring. And I don't want someone to make a mistake and do something that will be catastrophic. I know that the way that I did mine, that it works. Okay. But um, the Opus, you can buy up to eight additional batteries and it comes out to about 45,000 watt hours, uh, which can power the essentials in your home. If I have 45,000 watt hours, in my home, I can probably power the essentials. What I need in order to continue to run my home and to continue to live my life for probably two to three weeks, maybe even a little more. I'm talking about the refrigerator, the freezer, my lights, my water pump, uh, my water heater once in a while. We would probably go down, if it was that bad, we'd probably go down and taking a shower like once a week, right? But if we have solar panels and it's something like that, where it's a long-term crisis, we can always use solar panels to recharge and everything, things like that. So they already sell that. That's the that's called the, the Mega 5, and uh, it, you can buy additional batteries for it up to eight. So they already have that. Let's see. Bring it on down. N next, I don't know, man. I, don't, I, I can't say these words because I don't want to get shut down here. I've already got in trouble for that. Uh, but I don't know. Uh, you know, you know, it's going to come to a point where things are going to have to collapse. Our system is so rotten that things have no choice but to collapse. And uh, that's why we have to have that gold and silver so that after the dust settles, that we have something to start over with. Right. Because your preparations are to get you through the crisis and your wealth preservation is to get you started on the other side. OK, so. Ladies and gentlemen, what we're, we're at an almost an hour. We're at almost an hour. This is what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and say thank you to a few of you here that I see have left a few super chats. And then we're going to go and do the giveaway for the reverse osmosis water filtration system from Simpure. Now, before I forget, I want to say thank you to Simpure. Simpure has been very good to our channel over the last few years that we've partnered with them. They always give me something whenever I ask. I just asked here a few days ago, hey, can I give one of these away? They're like, absolutely. All you got to do is ask. And whatever you want to give away, we'll give away. All right. And uh, so I want to say thank you to Simpure. If you don't have an RO system or some kind of water filtration system in your home, it doesn't have to be a Simpure. Simpure, in my opinion, is the best bang for your buck in the RO industry. But you don't have to get a Simpure, ladies and gentlemen, but get one. 
get an RO filtration system, or at the very least, get some kind of a water filtration system that will take chemicals and, and bad things out of your water, right? Because you can never trust your utility. Not saying that your utility is bad and they, they want to do bad things to you and lie to you. Not saying that. But bad things can happen without a good utility knowing. So you may be getting bad water without them even knowing that the water is bad. And in the end, it will be the consumer of that water that suffers, be it a child, an elderly, or you yourself. So again, it doesn't have to be one from Simpure, but get one and get it installed in your house. Very important. A few of the things that I say that every family in the United States should have. Number one, everyone should have water filtration. Every family should have water filtration. Number two, a generator, right? Number two, a generator. And number three, excess in medications that you need in order to live. You should have those three things in your home before you even start to go on your real prepper journey, like getting food and stuff like that. You should have those three things. All right. So let me say thank you very much, Aussie Life. Thank you, Aussie Life, very much. Truly do appreciate. Uh, Cutting Tool Edge Designer, thank you. Thank you very much. God bless everyone on this Easter holiday. Let's remember Jesus at this time and bring him into your life. Also, here's more. <laughs> thank you very much. And indeed, remember the reason for the season. As I said earlier today, it's not about bunnies laying chocolate eggs. Uh, that's what they've been telling us and wanting to, us to think for a long time. So thank you very much for that. Uh, Big Bad John, how you doing? Thank you. I just wanted to stop by and support the best. Uh, thank you, brother. You're making me blush. Uh, happy Easter. Uh, happy Easter to our mods and community. God bless. Blessings to you as well and your family, Big Bad John. Uh, let's see. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that giveaway. Uh, let me see if I can bring it. Okay, I've got it set up. Now, if you all remember, uh, the giveaway entry was on the video that I did where I reviewed the Q3600 from Simpure. All right, so I've already got it set up. Here it is right here. And in order for you to enter, you had to put in the word reverse osmosis in your comment. And uh, that's already in there, reverse osmosis. So when I pick a winner, it's going to be someone that used the words reverse osmosis in their comments, okay? So I want to say good luck to everyone that entered. And here, that right there, one winner, winner, chicken dinner, two at gmail.com. That is the email address that you are going to use to email me your information. I do zero with your information except to send it to Simpure so that they can ship you your RO unit. I will need your name, the address that you want to ship to, and I do need a phone number. And again, I do not sell this information, neither does Simpure. They just use it to ship you the unit and to contact you in case there's any problems with the shipping. All right. So that's the rules. That's what I need from you. And whoever wins, I will leave you a reply on your comment in case you're not here. And you will have until next Friday. So this time next Friday, if whoever wins right now has not contacted me with their information at this here email address, I have to say all of this very plainly, ladies and gentlemen, to make sure that everyone understands. If you have not contacted me by this time, next Friday during our live stream, then what will happen is, is I will just give it away to someone in the live stream during next Friday's live stream. Let's hope it doesn't get to that. Let's hope you contact me so that you can get your prize. And here we go. Let's go ahead and pick a winner. And look at that. That's it. That's how easy it was. Let's see. Uh, would love a reverse osmosis system in our old farmhouse. Looked so easy to install too. Uh, good luck, everyone. Well, Graceful Cat 68, congratulations to you. Graceful Cat 68, I think that you've won something here before. I'm not sure if you have or not, but it sounds familiar. I think you have. But either way, congratulations. You just got yourself an awesome RO system, and you're going to see how easy it is to install, just like I told you all on that video. Let me go ahead and jot this down so that I don't forget who won. Okay, bear with me, ladies and gentlemen. If not, I will forget to do this. And let's see, 196 is the one. Okay, and there's our winner. So congratulations again, Graceful, Graceful Cat 68. 
All right, let's go ahead and do this. All right, awesome. And uh, we're a little bit over an hour right now. And uh, let's see. I'm going to bring it all the way down, ladies and gentlemen. So if uh, anyone's asked a question and I have not um, uh, answered it or, or commented and I have not put it up, go ahead and redo that. And uh, we'll spend another few minutes on here, five, ten minutes. And then we'll close it out because uh, I've got a steak in the fridge that needs to be put on the grill for dinner tonight. All right. So, yes, look, everyone's saying congratulations. That's awesome. Let's see. Dana Let's Prep says, uh, does anyone have a zero water counter water purifier? Zero water counter water purifier. If you're talking about the zero water uh, filter, those things are awesome. The zero water filter is just like having a, a RO system in a pitcher form. And uh, they're awesome. There's one downfall with it, uh, but still I think it's an awesome filter. And it's that the filter elements themselves, they have to be replaced pretty often. Uh, of course, depending on how dirty the water that's going into them is, but usually... Um, they only last between 50 to 100 gallons, which is still a great deal because I think each filter is like 10 or 11 bucks per filter. Uh, and they're a very good filtration system. I actually reviewed that system on this channel a while back. So it's a really good system. I actually have a prepping on the cheap water filtration system that I'll probably be reviewing next week sometime for my prepping on the cheap uh, videos. And it's a great system. And you're not going to believe how many gallons you can get out of each element. And uh, it's... um. It's a gravity-fed system, but it's a small portable one that you can put in your backpack and take anywhere. But anyways, that'll be next week. Uh, be on the standby for that if you're prepping on the cheap and uh, and getting an RO system or something like that. It's out of your reach. This system, I think, comes out to be like 30-something bucks. They're awesome. Uh, let's see. Uh, Aussie Life, thank you very much. Reward those. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> the preppy mantis says, no, I want steak. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Pantry Mama says, I love my new membrane solutions. Uh, Pantry Mama, what did you get? Tell me what uh, RO system you got, if you got an RO system. Because they also have the U3, which is the Berkey-like water filtration system, which I think does a great job. Oh, man, north of the 52nd asks, how far north from our home place have we been? And, oh, man, I don't remember. We are going to go to Circle this year, which is about 150 or 130 miles, something like that, north of here. I think it's like 130 miles or something like that north of here. Uh, but um, I don't know. We haven't been that, that far north. This The thing is, is there's really nothing up north. And so we haven't really been that far north, but we are going to go ahead and expand our horizons this summer and do a few camping trips uh, to some spots up north. Let's see. I'm trying to see if I can find one. Okay. Passionate Herbs. Have a good weekend. Uh, Mario says, Rudy, did you hear of the Opes releasing a new Exodus system model at the end of next month uh, that's supposed to be for people on tight budgets? I Actually, I already have it. It's down here. Where is it? <laughs> I've been testing it out for the last week or so. And uh, so far, so good. I really like it. I really like that it's so small, but I'm not even supposed to talk about it yet. OK, but I already have it. I'm reviewing it. I think it's a great little machine. The only thing that I don't know about it is how much it costs. I don't know what the price is on it. Uh, so I'm being kept on the dark in that. But the specifications on it are great for such a small machines. I got to stop talking about that now. <laughs> Ah, great question. South River Prepping asks, which is better, the Mega 2 or the 2400? Right now, for the price, 
the 2400. The Mega 2 and the 2400 are completely different animals, okay? Completely different, all right? The, the 2400 uh, has um, 2,232 watt hours. The Mega 2 has 2,072 watt hours of storable energy. The Mega 2 has 2,500 continuous watts. The 2400 is 2,400 continuous watts. The Mega 2 is a fast charger, so you can charge it uh, in like an hour and a half or maybe two hours. Whereas the uh, 2400, if you're charging off of the wall outlet, you're looking at about five, six hours. If you're charging at full capacity from solar, uh, you're looking at 940 watts or 960 watts. So you're looking at about two and a half hours with solar at full capacity because it takes like 960 watts solar coming in. Uh, let's see, the the Mega 2 has UPS, which means that you can plug it into the wall, have your appliance uh, going off of it. And if the electricity goes off, there's no miss. Your appliance will just continue to run, all right? Uh, whereas the 2400 has what's called pass-through charging, which means that you can be charging it slowly while you're using it. But if you're using it at a rate of wattage that is higher than what it can charge at, it will eventually deplete the battery. It will eventually go, you know, the battery will be depleted. So they're two different animals. But if you're looking for something that, for example, you just want to run your refrigerator, your freezer, a few lights, things like that for when the power goes out for, I don't know, maybe five, six hours, even a half of a day, 12 hours. The 2400 is going to be able to run your fridge for 12 hours, probably 16 hours or more. Okay. Uh, so it's great for that. But if you're looking for something that you maybe may want to hook up to your house, because the 20, the, um, uh, the mega two, you can add up to, I think it's four additional batteries to that. Bring it all the way up to like 10,000 watt hours. If you want something that you can hook up to your house, you can hook up your mega two up to your house. Uh, so you can add batteries to that. It's got a 30 amp uh, receptacle on it as well that you can hook up to your house or RV. So there are two different monsters. If you're on a budget and you fall within that category, like I talked about, you just want a, something to run your fridge, your lights and stuff like that during a power outage here or there, the 2400 for the price, you can't beat it. You cannot beat it. It comes in at like 33 or 34 cents per watt hour. It's crazy. The, uh, the Mega 2. Right now, I think they have it on sale for like 1199 bucks or something like that. So about roughly 1100 and change, you know, once you use the coupon code. Uh, it's a great machine. Uh, but that Mega 2 is like the machine that, that's going into the future, whereas the 2400 is the legacy model that is still a great model, a great price, but it's not as advanced as the Mega 2. Uh, you see, for those of you that are new here, that is how I can take a question that only took two seconds to ask and stretch it out into a 10 minute answer. All right, that's what my daughter was talking about earlier today. All right, I'll tell you what, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my goodness. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, and do this because uh, my voice is starting to go. Uh, Joshua says, what is the TDS on the Berkey-like system from Simpure? How well does if well the thing is is that with with uh, carbon filters like those black ones that Berkey has and that Simpure has the U3 you really aren't going to get a great TDS out of it a total dissolved solid out of it because you have those uh, micro uh, that little micro powder from the carbon so you're not going to get a good TDS what I've recommended is that don't believe me. If you go take a look at the video where I reviewed the U3, man, that water is crystal clear. You can literally read through it. You can put a glass in front of a book and read through it. That's how clean that water comes out. But don't believe me when I tell you that the water is good, that the test is good. Do your own test. That way you know for a fact that you're drinking water that you're, you're comfortable with feeding to your family. You know what I mean? Like I can show you the machine on the review. I can tell you, hey, this is great and stuff like that. But I would rather not share with you any test results. 
Why? Because I want you to do it, ladies and gentlemen. I want you to send that off a test or I want you to buy yourself a kit and test it so that you can be comfortable with it. Don't ever have any doubts in your mind that something that you're using, especially for preparedness or survival, that it's not going to work when you need it. You need to be comfortable with it. I can tell you this about every product that I've reviewed from Simpure thus far has been a good quality product that has done exactly what they said it's supposed to do. So, and, and the price for those filters for the U3, man, those are some really great prices. And they're supposed to be rated at about 3,000 gallons per. So it's a great deal. James McKay asked, what are your thoughts on the 25 rhinos that voted to kick the can down the road? Is that it doesn't matter anymore, James. It doesn't matter anymore. It doesn't matter what they do. Uh, I think in a way, if I want to be optimistic about this, I think that it's a good thing that they're kicking the can down the road. Let me tell you why before you get upset. Because we, we the people that are in the know, people that are in this platform, people that study the system the way it is, we all know that the system by which we are governed today, both politically and financially, will implode eventually. We know this, okay? This is fact, right? So being that we know this, we can do two things with this information. We can use it to better prepare ourselves for the day that the eventuality of this system ending comes to be. We can use that time, that extra time that they're giving us by kicking the can down the road. And we can also use that time to try to inform others of what's going on, maybe people that are still a, a little bit asleep, maybe wake some people up so that they can start to prepare as well. Because the more people that are prepared when this finally comes to be, the better that our country will be. So in a way, you can say, good, let them keep kicking it down the road. It's like I said, let them keep, uh, let them keep suppressing the price of silver. Let them keep suppressing it. Because eventually, the free market value of silver will be, uh, whatchamacallit, um, what word am I looking for? Realized. Eventually, the free market price of silver will be realized, right? So the longer that they, they manipulate the price, the more that I can get on the cheap. And the more people that haven't gotten any on the cheap can wake up and start getting some on the cheap. That way, we'll be better off on the other side of this system. Because there's no way that this system can continue the way that it is today. So, I mean, trying to look at a good way, I guess that's the best way that I can look at it. However, I think I know where you're getting at by the 25 rhinos. And it's that, you know, the system that we have because of fiat currency has allowed people to go into these positions that don't care about their country. And they only care about what they can get from their countrymen. You see, uh, political positions, congressmen, senators, even the president. It used to be that those positions were not sought after. It used to be that those positions, people had to be kind of like asked, please, can you do this job? You're the best person for the job. And they're like, no, I don't want to do it. But they did it because they did it because they had a duty to their nation. They felt that they had a duty to their countrymen and they love their country. And that's why they do it, even though it was a burden for them to do it. Nowadays, they want to do it because they know that they will be rich on our backs the backs of the taxpayer. So yeah, uh, you know, you're always going to have people that uh, would rather have more money than dignity and or uh, intestinal fortitude. And that's just the way it's going to work. Uh, I think that there was a time where if you were a banker or a lawyer, you could not run for Congress or Senate. Uh, I think back in history, there was a time and then they changed that and then things started going downhill. Man, I'll tell you what, Kim's Cluckers, that's a great price. Kim says, is $200 a fair price for a Troy Bill gas generator, 5,500 5, watts and 8,500? Um, maybe you have that backwards. But even if it's a 5,500, it's a great price. It has four 110s. It's got a 220. I need to run a deep well, and I have three. That's great price. Great, great price. Two, are you kidding me? 200 bucks? Man, that is a great price. If Even if you're buying it used, 
that's a great price. Just make sure that it's serviceable and that it works. If you're buying this new, Kim, I would buy like two or three of them. If this was a brand new price, is like a sale or something somewhere. That's a great price. Let's see. Doc Holiday, how you doing? Good to see you. Okay, I see some people saying good night, and I have to do the same, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, have a great evening. <laughs> Let me see. Rich Mountain says, I want Rudy to stay for another two hours. Uh, <laughs> uh, thank you for that. But uh, I'm starting to lose my voice. All right, have a great evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'll see if I can put out a video this Sunday. Uh, things are melting outside, so it's going to get a little bit busier. But I'll do my very best to put out a news video this Sunday because that's when it's due. So hopefully you have a good weekend. Have a great Friday. Uh, make sure that you're being safe. Let me see. Don't drink and drive, ladies and gentlemen. Right. If you're going to drink, have a great time. Get a designated driver, uh, get an Uber, get a cab, uh, call someone, wake someone up at two in the morning if you have to, so that they can come and get you. But don't get behind the wheel if you had uh, a lot, to, if you've had anything to drink, in my opinion. All right. Don't ruin your life over a mistake that only takes you a few seconds to make. Other than that, I want to say thank you very much to every one of you for your support. I hope to see you again on Monday for my live stream with gray man which will be on this channel right here and i do have something from nutrient survival this monday uh that they're giving me to offer to you all at an awesome price so hope to see you there and uh don't get any nutrient survival this weekend wait till monday if you're going to get some just in case i know some people always wait for the sales and there's going to be a good sale uh so again have a great weekend god bless every one of you god bless america thank you ladies and gentlemen i do appreciate every one of you and let me see. Here's our outro. Let me see if I can pick the right outro this time. Here it is. God bless you all. I'm Alaska Prepper. I'm out.